This is a review of the cardiac and coronary CTA that we use in conjunction with the dissection during the anatomy lab. So I'll be covering some of the basic structures uh, of the heart and the vessels. So when I approach this, I, I like to think about being a small red blood cell flowing from the venous system to the right side of the heart, through the heart, out into the pulmonary vasculature, then returning through the pulmonary veins to the left side of the heart and then be pumped out into the systemic circulation. So let's start on the venous side. So here I have an axial and a coronal reformat of a coronary CTA. And so contrast is given and then scanned at the right time when you have uh, a lot of contrast in the heart chambers as well as within the coronary arteries. So starting from the top, we have the superior vena cava. You can see it's really bright because contrast was injected from an upper extremity. Blood in the superior vena cava is going to flow inferiorly into the right atrium. And so here's the right atrium. And you can see that there is quite a bit of mixing of contrast, meaning you have some bright areas and some darker areas where there is blood without contrast in it. As we continue down, we should find the other two blood supplies uh, or blood filling the right atrium. And going inferiorly, we have the inferior vena cava. Now, not having contrast in it because the contrasted blood or the contrast we injected has not yet gone all the way out into the extremities and out into the abdomen and been returned to the inferior vena cava. So here's the inferior vena cava. The other structure here is the coronary sinus. So that returns deoxygenated blood that has been uh, supplying the heart that is then draining back down into the right atrium. From the right atrium, blood's going to pass through the tricuspid valve, which is in this region. Now the tricuspid valve itself is difficult to see because of motion on this particular scan. Um, but would separate the right atrium from the right ventricle. The right ventricle is a larger chamber located more anteriorly or the most anterior chamber of the heart due to the oblique axis of the heart in the chest. From the right ventricle, blood is going to be pumped out, extending superiorly through the pulmonic valve. And the pulmonic valve is also hard to see as the blood passes into the pulmonary trunk. And there are some small hypodensities in this region that may represent uh, some of the uh, leaflets for the pulmonic valve. Anyhow, the blood continues out into the pulmonary trunk, or also known as the main pulmonary artery, where it then splits into a right and a left division. These are then further going to bifurcate into uh, vessels supplying the different lobes and then further divide into the pulmonary segment, segmental arteries. Blood's going to go out all the way out around the alveoli. Blood's going to be oxygenated. Uh, it's going to deliver CO2 uh, for expiration. And then oxygenated blood is going to return through the venous system to the left atrium. So the left atrium is the posteriormost chamber located just here, anterior to the esophagus and anterior to the descending thoracic aorta. The vessels as they come in usually coalesce into two pulmonary veins on each side. So you're going to have a left superior and inferior pulmonary vein and a right superior and inferior pulmonary vein. So if we go to the top of the atrium, we can see that here we have a right superior pulmonary vein. And then as we continue inferiorly, there's going to be an inferior pulmonary vein. In the coronal plane, you can see that that's a superior pulmonary vein 
coming into the left atrium and a inferior pulmonary vein on the right coming into the atrium. Same thing on the patient's left side. So here we'll have a left superior pulmonary vein draining the left upper lobe and then an inferior pulmonary vein on the left draining the left lower lobe draining into the left atrium. At this level we can also see the interatrial septum. From the left atrium blood's going to go through the mitral valve which we can see here two leaflets of the mitral valve and associated papillary muscle. Blood enters the left ventricle. Pay attention to the ventricular size and the thickness of the walls of the left ventricle. And you will see that the left ventricle has a much more muscular wall due to the need to generate high pressures to deliver a higher pressure out to the systemic circulation. Blood is then pumped from the left ventricle superiorly and somewhat more centrally here into the left ventricular outflow tract through the aortic valve. Now in this case due to motion it does look like there's four cusps associated with the aortic valve but there are only three cusps uh, in this patient. Blood will flow through the valve into the ascending thoracic aorta. And we don't include it in this lab, but we did it in the previous lab of the thorax, where you can see the aortic arch forming, connecting the ascending to the descending thoracic aorta. And you could see all the branches coming off at the top. But before it does that, we have the takeoff of the coronary arteries. And so there are two main takeoffs. From the right coronary cusp, we have the right coronary artery, which will take off, coursing anterolaterally and inferiorly. Now it courses in the right coronary sulcus, also known as the atrioventricular groove or AV groove, here between the right ventricle and right atrium. Coursing inferiorly down to the bottom of the heart. On the left side, it's slightly more complex. We have a short segment of a left main coronary artery that is quickly going to bifurcate into the LAD or the left anterior descending coronary artery, which will take an anterior course and inferiorly forcing in the anterior interventricular groove. If we go back up to the left main, left main, the other branch, when it bifurcates, is going to go directly inferiorly, right here, and that is the left circumflex coronary artery. That artery will continue down between the left atrium and left ventricle. So it can be difficult when you can't scroll up and down and you're stuck with one, two, or three images to figure out what anatomic structure you're looking at. But one of the main kind of cross points is on this axial image. There are a lot of structures here, bifurcating and round structures that you're cutting through. And so let's point out some of these. So here on the left side, large vascular structure that bifurcates is the pulmonary trunk, separated into a right and left pulmonary artery. Right next to it is the ascending aorta, the ascending thoracic aorta. Right next to it, here filled with contrast is the supravena cava. Now if we continue more posteriorly, we'll see these two dark structures, and that is going to be 
the bronchi. And if we follow those up, you can see that you have the carina, where the trachea split into right and left main stem bronchi. And then you have the takeoff of the right superior bronchus, and then the bronchus intermedius. So at this level, we have the bronchus intermedius and the left main stem bronchus. Behind that, we have the esophagus that has a little bit of gas in it. And then immediately posterior and lateral to that, we have the descending thoracic aorta. So that sums up the coronary and cardiac anatomy.